good afternoon, everybody. And uh, this is actually the, it's kind of uh, observation of the, on the uh, Chinese labor market. And uh, it's not a, uh, a, a paper. So uh, I'm sorry about uh, sending the, the, the PPT to, to Meng Xing very late. And uh, we just, uh, I just explained to, to, to her. Uh, the motivation of, of, of uh, this presentation is to, uh, we, we all know China have already um, almost completed the, the, the process of industrialization and all, a lot of the uh, labor moving out of agriculture and uh, work in all farm sectors and this is a, a significant structural change. But we. But we want to more details about the, the recent uh, changes in the labor market, like the, how the job allocates in, in all farm sectors. So this is kind of the observation on, on, on that uh, trend. Uh, firstly, I want to give some background uh, introduction on the, on the recent labor market changes, like uh, how, uh, uh, why the structural change is very important in China right now to in, in order to uh, escape the, the, the middle income trap we uh, talked this morning. Uh, this, this picture shows the, the, the demographic change, the impact of demographic change on the labor market as the background. The, mm, the figure, uh, the la uh, labor popul population at the labor la la working age population change. You can see in recent year uh, it uh, actually decreased in, in, in total number of the of this uh, age group. According to the MBS, since uh, 2002, we have uh, decreased over three million every year of the, uh, of the of, of population in that age group. So this kind of change kind of uh, dominate the labor market uh, equilibrium because uh, it, it seems that the changes in demand side factors have very, very weak impacts on the, on the uh, general trend of labor market outcomes. Like uh, in recent year, China has a very relatively low uh, economic growth rate. But if you look at the, the labor market, it's, uh, the unemployment rate is very low and it's, it's quite stable. Uh, uh, the reason is we, we have a shrinking size of a, a working age population. But uh, this is good this, since we have a very uh, depressed uh, demand, demand uh, uh, for, for labor, but uh, we can keep the, the stable uh, uh, labor market. But it might decrease the, the potential economic growth rate because if we simply, uh, uh, I mean, if the the, the, the shrinking size of labor uh, affects the, the, the outcome, and it will increase the, uh, the labor cost uh, very dramatically. I will show the picture next, uh, later on. And also, if we, if the supply side have a dominant role, it will simply increase the, uh, the, the wages for unskilled workers without, even without the, the productivity growth or that, uh, for that group. So it, it, it will increase the opportunity cost of education and then will have some negative impacts on education and, for hum and human capital accumulation. I will show some evidence later. So this is the, the, the picture. Um, this picture is uh, I calculated based on some uh, different sorts of data to show the uh, unit labor cost, uh, the trend of unit labor costs in, in manufacturing sectors. Uh, the, so you, you can see in, in recent year, because of the wage growth of, uh, for unskilled workers, and in, in, in particularly in labor intensive, intensive sectors, uh, the unit labor cost in China grows very fast. Uh, um, and on the contrary, if you look at the, what, what is this is a, um, uh, 
Just a close friend, close friend. Uh, yeah, yeah. The the unit labor cost is the the, the labor cost uh, divided by the labor um, labor productivity. So it's, uh, this is the uh, the above line is the unit unit labor cost, and the the the, the the other line is the, the economic growth rate. The average labor productivity. No, 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 it's a labor cost. Uh, value, value, added. value added. No, no, no. Uh, you, you mean the labor productivity? Yes, value added by, divided by the, by the, the number of employment in, in manufacturing sector. Any, any more questions on that? Honestly, speak. No, 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 no. What does that mean? It's a, it's a. In in 2013, the unit labor cost is one point uh, two three eight. Not not rate of growth. It's a level. It's a level. No, no. It's a growth rate. Is the I mean the, the, the GDP growth rate. There is yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I just show you. It's a. It, it, it's a. It's a, it's a uh, wage um, divide. Uh, our labor costs divided by the labor productivity. That's the unit, unit labor cost definition. It's wage adjusted by, by we don't have the detailed number of uh, other uh, labor costs like uh, the social insurance. So we have some adjusted uh, factor. No, no, it's it's just a ratio. A ratio. Yeah. It's a uh, it's a uh, labor cost per worker divided by labor productivity. Yeah. Right. Okay, maybe maybe we can discuss it later. It's a and also we we can we can find because of the, this kind of labor market change we, we can find dramatic labor uh, where So in in United States it's about the point seven. In Japan it's point five. Yeah. Yeah. 
I think it, I think it's because of the, pro, the the labor costs grow faster than productivity growth. Okay. And also, we can find the the wage wage convergence uh, has already taken place between uh, between agriculture and non agriculture. The 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 right the right uh, panel we we show the high labor in agriculture. The wage for high high uh, labor in agriculture and the wages for migrant workers. And you can see a, a significant trend of the convergence ha have already uh, taken place. A high labor in agriculture, which represents for the, the, the rural wages and also the, the, migrant, the wages for migrant workers. And they have, have already con converged over time. We don't have, we don't have, we don't, we don't have our data. We don't have working hours. Uh, but we don't have the, the for high level, we only have the daily wage rate. Well, it's a, uh, I mean, you can look at the trend. So it's a, uh, and also we 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 recently found the, in China we can we find the employment start moving from from uh, manufacturing to the service. In this the the left uh, panel used the uh, three round of economic census to calculate the the, the productiv labor productivity productivity in 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 each year, and we can find in, in manufacturing the. Productivity growth in real term actually uh, it's a uh, quite fast faster in 2004, 2008, and 2013. But in 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 service sector, you can see the relatively low uh, growth rate of productivity in between 2008 and 2013. That means if we have more employment working working in in service sector. It's it's kind uh, more difficult to get a productivity uh, uh, growth and uh, uh, to to support the economic growth. And the 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 right uh, panel we used uh, uh, to is, is to show the the gain of reallocate labor from agriculture to non-agriculture and uh, we used uh, the difference between high labor high labor in agriculture and the migrant w workers uh, wages to look at what kind of this difference contributes to economic growth and you look at the share in the in the early of this century is uh, is quite high about 80 percent of the gdp come from that of a labor re reallocation but in recent year it because of the wage convergence and the productivity com productivity convergence so we can get a, a, a Smaller room to 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 get the productivity gain, which means uh, the, because of the change in labor market in recent year, it's going to be more and more difficult to to use this kind of uh, means uh, to get economic growth. So that means in in China we have already finished this kind of industrialization or completed this process. Then the structural change. In the future, maybe more uh, difficult or maybe more complicated. And so, with what what the structural changes are, um, it's a it's a going to be an issue. We we are going to uh, talk about here. So I, I'm going to use uh, later. We I'm going to use the uh, 2005 the mini sense one percent of a population sampling. Uh, uh, data and 2010 the, the census data to look at the, the, the job changes in, in the Chinese labor market. The idea is we, we, we use two digit occupation uh, uh, measurement and the um, and two, two digit of the sector in, in each job. And then we, we can construct this kind of matrix to look at each, the, the each cell 
represent a job, and then we we rank the the the, the jobs by by wage. If, uh, uh, fortunately, we have the wage data in 2005, uh, the, the mini data. So then we we look at the pattern of uh, this kind of structural change in the Chinese labor market. A is the, the result. If you look at the quintile, it's a uh, so not like the, the, the same study in European countries, they, they have shown in different, uh, many countries they, they have shown the polarized uh, pattern, that which, which means here, which means here and here, uh, the, the jobs increased and, the, and here it's kind of decreased. But in China we have, we have seen uh, the, the more up, more advanced jobs actually have a, have a, have an increase. Yeah, it's a percentile. Uh, in two thousand two thousand five. No, we. Particular job, not, not 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 occupation. Occupation is one dimension of the to define the job. The job is the kind of metric of sale. So we have a, totally we have a, a five thousand jobs. In each job, we we, we we know we know how how many workers in that job. And then we rank the 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 the, the job by wage. And then here is the, sorry, here is the quintile of the, the, the jobs. The rubbish is, is at uh, uh, SIO. Yeah, it's a Yes, it's between 2005 and 2010. And if you look at the education of each, uh, uh, each quintile, uh, we also see that more uh, advanced jobs have uh, more uh, years of uh, schooling. And this is a uh, show. This, this this picture have already showed the. Uh, the, China, the, the, the the structural change in the labor market have already shown show the pattern of upgrading the, the jobs, not uh, um, polarized uh, like in other labor markets. And also, there are some observations across countries uh, to look at that we, with economic development, the, the jobs first specialized and then diversified at the middle income uh, stage. We also use this uh, uh, kind of data to look at this, to, to look at the genie of each, uh, uh, each, um, each quintile. And you, we can find between 2005 and 2010, the sector, the, the, the Employment in sectors is more actually more di um, diversified in, in China. It's like uh, no Gini for employment, employment in each, each job. No, no, in each job we have number of employment. We have five thousand jobs. And we, we calculate the each, each 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 quintile we calculate the genie of that in, in that yeah dispersion of the, yeah right yeah so if you look at the manufacturing and service using the same same methodology you can find also find the, the more diversified uh, within these uh, uh, sectors so. 
we have already shown the, the two patterns of the, uh, the structure change. One is it's more, uh, it's, it's kind of upgraded, and then it's more diversified across jobs. So I think if you look, if you think this is the pattern, I mean, China is going to facilitate the structure change like this. But how? I think these um, three aspects are very important. Firstly, we should have more flexible labor market institution, institutions to, to like a, um, uh, labor mobility happen more easily. And also, we, we need uh, uh, very responsive forms to, f to kind of adapt to these changes. And also, we need uh, qualified workers. Firstly, I think that the, the picture I've shown that the, the China is kind of a upgrade to the economic structure. So additional years of schooling in general is, is, is important for China. Uh, yeah, in, in this case, China have already uh, achieved a nine-year compulsory education and also have a lot of investment in, in, high, in higher education. At this, at this stage, we think China extending the compulsory education to 12 years is uh, relatively important. And also, we, we find because of the uh, increased, uh, significant increase uh, of uh, wages for unskilled workers, there, there are some extra negative externality for, for schooling. This is a, uh, um, exercise we used the, the 2005 uh, minimum wage, uh, 2005 minimum wage data to look at the average wage of workers in jun jun junior high school, nine years of education, uh, uh, and this impact on the uh, dropout rate in, in, uh, in certain regions, like in, in, in Western China, this is a quite a significant impact of the, on the dropout rate, which means if you have high wage for unskilled workers, then you, can, you, can have, you will see high dropout rate in, uh, in Western China. Which, The wage variable is, uh, is uh, we, we construct that um, this um, by prefecture to, to, to look at the prefecture level uh, wage, uh, you know, wage level, the, the impact of wage level on the um, uh, dropout rate individual. No, it's a it's a, it's a it's a average wage rate of uh, of of workers. Completing. Sorry. Sorry. So the point here is, uh, we we need to compensate this kind of uh, opportunity cost of the. Uh, Education in in compulsory education uh, uh, education stage, and this uh, also we need to ex uh, uh, I mean have uh, extending the the com compulsory education to twelve years I think to get more years of schooling for workers, and uh, this is a kind of uh, uh, age. Uh, the share of the population at this uh, age group to, to total population, you can see a significant trend of decline, which means uh, kind of uh, physically afford affordable for China to, to do this kind of uh, 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 reforms. You mean the share?
this edge cohort to divide by total population. It's I mean, you, you have 5% of population at that edge group, okay? So, even we have already seen the more diversified change in in uh, in sectors. So that means how how do we uh, I mean assign uh, allocate the, the 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 education resource is also important because if we spend a lot of money on the vocational education, which means. Uh, we have we have we have been facing with a lot of uncertainties in in, in this kind of structural change uh, to see the uh, diversified sectors is kind of uh, uh, risky, and also we found that uh, in, there are some literature point out a, a inverted U shape of a, a vocational to general education in in developing country developed countries even in 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 Germany, and so. In China, in recent years, in the last 10 years, it's a, also have an inverted U, uh, U shape. But uh, the, the policymakers start thinking to increase the number of vocational education by uh, to 23 million by 2020, which means the, v, uh, the, the ratio of V to G is going to be uh, going up again. But uh, since the the, the level in the level market is you, we have seen the more diversified and uh, uh, this kind of uh, education uh, change maybe uh, facing with some uh, risky or uncertainties. So to facilitate the change, we also need to the the. The, 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 the firms to be responsive to this kind of uh, lab market signals. We, using the firm data, we have already seen some uh, the, the wedge elasticity is quite responsive. It, um, but the, the substitution effect between skilled and unskilled workers is very weak. The elasticity is very low compared to other countries, which means uh, maybe we need some uh, more uh, institutional reforms in, at the firm level to let, let the, the, the firm be more responsive to the, uh, uh, the market outcomes. And also, we have some institutional changes in, 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 the, uh, in recent years. This left, left uh, panel is a comparison of the employment rigidity between China and other uh, OECD countries. If you, uh, the high score means the more rigid, rigid labor market institutions. You can see China is here. Is in uh, the labor contract law, this kind of institution is with a very um, uh, labor in, uh, employment protective. And also you can see the, the um, minimum wage institution uh, uh, Minimum wage increased quite uh, fast in the past few years compared to the GDP growth. So the idea here is promoting structural changes is, I think, it's a necessary way to improve productivity and to help China avoid the middle income trap. Um, the preliminary analysis indicates that uh, the Chinese labor market has already been upgrading and diversified growth sector. To su support these changes, China needs to invest more in education and also needs to uh, focus more on the general education in, in uh, 12 years. And in addition, China needs to let the labor market for the institutions more flexible in this, at this stage of economic development. Also, in some other like a hook reform to have a uh, to increase the further mo labor mobility is also uh, very important. Thank you. I got these slides yesterday afternoon and I couldn't understand most of it. Not until just now. Before 
after lunch. So I will make lots of mistakes because I didn't understand it. Um, I, I only have very few things to say. And I, I thought I didn't understand exactly what the paper, the questions about the paper is about. And I, from reading the slide, I thought this was the main thing. So the, you want to look at the jobs uh, over these two census years to see how it changed. And I think it's an important question to understand that. And um, no. So first of all, we want to we want to know exactly what has happened. And also, from that, we might be able to think about the trend um, in the future, what's going to happen. So I, I thought that exercise is interesting. But you need to explain it much better. I just couldn't understand it. Um, in the introduction part, you, you have three points, and I couldn't understand most of it. The change in demand side factors have weak impact on general trend of labor market outcomes. What do you mean and why? I, I, I didn't get it. Uh, it might decrease the potential economic growth rate. I assume you're talking about the supply change. Will the, the supply change will, will decrease the um, economic growth, and then you say the increase the uh, it increases opportunity cost of education, and that really um, confused me. So I thought you're talking about supply. So supply is decreasing, and why is opportunity cost of education will increase? I, I didn't get that. So mainly, I didn't understand your introduction part. And then the main empirical work, and so from your two charts, and I think the main number of job increase occurred in the third, fourth, and fifth decile. And these deciles, uh, have average years of schooling of nine years. So over this time, it's the nine years of education. Uh, uh, if we think this is demand side of the uh, thing, then it's demand for nine years of education increased dramatically. And also, um, but later on, you keep on saying, we need to have compulsory education on 12 years. I just don't get that. And I thought from your chart, it's very, very clear. It's the demand for nine years. And I thought it would be interesting if you tell us what are these jobs in these cells and give us some um, intuitive sense and we can see how these jobs have changed. And whether these jobs are in manufacturing sector, in service sector, what kind of service sector. And then now we at least allow me to understand exactly what's going on. Uh, here, I was just completely confused, so forget about it. It's, uh, it's completely wrong. And, uh, but uh, there's a few questions I want to ask. You said China evenly upgrades the economic structure. That I don't understand. Because from your chart, I didn't see the, the evenly change of jobs. So is that what you mean by upgrading? And whether that, why it's even, it's not even. And then. Yeah, this is the question I was, if the main increase in jobs require nine years of schooling, why should we make 12 years schooling compulsory? And then you say it is also important to intervene the negative externality of current labor market outcomes. And I didn't know what do you mean by negative externality of labor market outcomes. 
And this is wrong. And then these variables are. So these variables is at prefecture level, right? Um, and I think the return to this education should have same similar trend, no? The wages of for these for these groups over time should have similar trend. If they do have similar trend, you put both of them in and you get one positive, one negative. That really bothers me. And maybe if you look at them together, the, it, the effect will just drop out. I don't, I, I don't really know what the trend looks like. I want to see it. When you have very strong uh, multicollinearity, the estimates are not very, you can't really separately identify them. And then, uh, this is very minor point. You need to cluster um, them at the prefecture level. Mm. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, but this variable is at prefecture level, right? So you need to cluster. That's all. I sorry, I don't have much more to say, but that's it. Thank you for your presentation. I just want to clarify something for the uh, um, unit labor cost share in, in your graph. So uh, I remember that from official data, the wage share in uh, secondary industry is about like rounding from 38% to like 60 something percent uh, by uh, provinces. And so I'm wondering about how, where those 20% like what's the data source and stuff. And second thing is you talk about like the education level of those workers and we know from like around 2003 there have been a sustained increase in the college graduate number. So that's, a, that's from the supply side. I'm wondering how that's related to a comparison. Uh, on the one slide, you have this proportion, I think, of the people with vocational educate graduating from vocational schools to the people graduating from general, I guess, secondary schools. And it like, increased by 25 percentage points over a few years and then decreased again. How is that possible? What, really ha what actually happened? Okay, the, the question on the, so, so firstly, thank, thank you for, I mean, this is for in a very short time to give the very detailed com comments on my we, we can t uh, discuss it later. And the, the unit, unit labor cost is kind of, uh, we, we use different source of data, like uh, uh, using the uh, uh, statistical yearbook to get the uh, urban manufacturing workers' employment and using the uh, uh, migrant workers' monitoring survey to get the migrant uh, workers in manufacturing sectors and, so that, and then get the employment in manufacturing in whole China. I also use the um, GDP uh, uh, value added in manufacturing sector to get the, uh, the, 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 the value added in that sector. And then we uh, uh, we use the different source uh, to calculate the, the labor costs. So it's a it's a, it's a different very various source of data, and uh, maybe it's uh, so. I I think the the level is quite uh, uh, consistency, and but the um, maybe the trend is uh, kind of controversial uh, compared to the some discussion in China. And uh, sorry, the your question is. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, that's uh, in in that uh, between two thousand five and two thousand uh, ten, China have e e expansion of the vocational education, and then to, because of the low quality of the, the that education and no more, I mean more and more uh, 
children choose to the general education, so they can, you can see the decline uh, line. But the government try to, I mean, uh, let it uh, go, go, go up again. <laughs> so that's the, uh, why, why am I arguing on that? I think in China there's been a discussion about this concern that because there's so much demand for middle school graduates in manufacturing and other places, wages of that group are going up, that many rural children are just choosing to leave after middle school. And of course that's rational, right, That's uh, uh, for them to do so. But I think there is a concern, I think, which is reflected in the tone of his discussion that that may not be good in the long term. Uh, once China needs to go, move to kind of an uh, even higher kind of skill economy, that some of these uh, young people may be making kind of short, short-sighted uh, decisions as the economy, as the structure continues to change. Um, and so the facts, I think, are well established, but I think the interpretation, obviously it's not really evidenced that they should expand to make... I think all the discussion of what the the training strategy should be in terms of vocational versus general or making a general high school mandatory those are kind of non-evidenced arguments in general but I think they are they are important arguments and maybe there's ways to to bring some more evidence to bear